guys welcome back to another the safest video i am so so proud of you for showing up today and i want you to give yourself a good pat on the back because you're investing your time and energy in practicing dsa which is going to help you get a really good job in future i assure you you will do it i just need you to practice today the question that we are going to do today is very interesting it's a binary question but it is going to help you understand recursion very very properly you'd be sure that okay you have understood recursion properly or not and that is why i am taking binary trees and recursion parallelly because binary trees requires recursion all the time so let's get started this is the question that we will be doing today count number of sub trees having given sum I know it sounds very simple that we have done similar questions earlier but it is a bit tricky and I want you to try writing the code or think about it properly to understand that okay what is the problem over here that we will face so basically we are given a sum and we have to find all the sub trees we have to find the number of sub trees that exist that have this given sum so in this case the sum that is given to us is 7 and here the answer is 2 because there are two sub trees one is this minus 10 plus 9 plus 8 is 7 and the other sub tree is this 7 itself even if there is only one node it is a sub tree now the important point here to understand is that what is a sub tree if you take one node two nodes three nodes any if you take the uh, total number of nodes it will be sub tree but you have to understand that this cannot be a sub tree like 5 minus 10 in 3 cannot be a sub tree sub tree means you have to take till like down level you have to take till leaf node see minus 10 9 8 is a sub tree but if you take only 5 minus 10 3 that is not a sub tree you can't take only like the upper portion of it if you start taking from any root from any root you take like all the nodes below it it becomes a sub tree see from here also if i take 3 minus 4 and 7 it is a sub tree if i take just minus 4 it is a sub tree if i take just 7 it is a sub tree but if i take 3 and minus 10 that is obviously not a sub tree uh so i hope you have understood that what a sub tree is you take any root in that particular tree and from that root all the children will become a sub tree right another point to note over here is that there can be multiple sub trees with the same sum why is that see here there are negative numbers also involved even zero numbers can be there right so suppose uh this sub tree had a sum and suppose this value was 0 then obviously this sub tree also has the same sum and this sub tree also has the same sum and because of negative numbers again there can be multiple sub trees with the same sum right so this is one important point that you have to see that for every possible sub tree you have to calculate that okay uh, is the sum equal or not okay okay so till now we have understood that we have to consider every possible sub tree and we have to see that okay is the sum of the sub tree equal to the x number that is given to us or not now what is sum of a sub tree let's try to understand that we have to try breaking the bigger problem to smaller sub problems right that is what we do in recursion and in trees right now let's understand what is sum of a sub tree now what did we do when we found sum of a tree we found that okay what is the sum of the left sub tree plus what is the sum of the right sub tree plus the uh, root node value right that is what we have to do for every sub tree over here so even if you are considering the single node just 9 that is also a sub tree how do you calculate sum of this so on the left there is no node so the sum of the left sub tree becomes 0 the sum of the right sub tree becomes 0 plus the node value right that is what we have to do for every sub tree that is how we find the sum of the tree see sub tree is actually a tree only we are why we are calling it sub tree because it's just a smaller tree of the bigger problem that we have so calculating sum of sub tree is actually quite calculating sum of tree only because it it in itself is a tree it just has a different node than the root node that we are given that's it okay so don't get too much confused about uh, finding the sum of the sub tree because it is essentially the same thing as finding sum of tree now the next thing to note over here is that we need a counter right we need a counter that is incremented whenever we are considering all the sub trees okay now every time we find a sub tree we have to increment that counter so let's try writing the code and let's see how can we deal with that counter right so here i'm going to write a function or a recursive function i'm calling it helper i obviously need to pass the root and i need to pass the sum that i'm looking for the x value that is given to me other than this i need to have a counter now if you notice i am passing this counter by reference i have added this ampersand why have i done that because i need this counter to be incremented at any point of time every time i find a sub tree this counter should be incremented i don't care which sub tree am i considering am i considering only one node three nodes two nodes it doesn't matter 
If I am considering any root, the subtree from that root, if the sum becomes equal to x, I have to increment this count, and that is it, right? So basically, what I will do, I will find a sum, right? Say initially it is zero, and if that sum becomes equal to x, what am I am going to do? I am going to do count of plus plus, and this I want to be able to do in any subtree. That is why I am passing it by reference. Now let's come to the tricky part. We have to see how to calculate the sum. What did I say? What is the sum of a tree? Sum is basically sum of left plus sum of right subtree plus whatever value was there. So basically, if we have whatever node we are dealing with, that data, right? So this is the sum that we have to calculate. Now, how do we calculate this left and right sum again and again? Do I make another function where I am calculating the left uh, subtree ka sum, the right subtree ka sum all the time? This is the problem that is going to happen. See, this function we have written by because we have to increment the counter. But actually, we can use the same function to do two things. So I want this function to also calculate the sum and return the sum because anyway I am calculating the sum, right? So what will happen is. I will basically return integer value from here, and this is the tricky point of this question that we are going to return the sum also. So basically, every time we calculate, we are going to return the sum. It's okay if you have not understood. Once we have done writing the entire code, I'll explain it again, and it will be clear to you. Just be patient with me. So now what we are going to do is I'm commenting this, and along with sum, I also am going to calculate left sum, and I'm going to calculate right sum. Initially, I am initializing all the sum values to zero. Okay. Now, see, I need to find the left sum and the right sum. How am I going to do that? I can just do left sum will be equal to helper, and I am going to just pass root ka left value. I am going to pass the same sum and the counter. Right. Now, if the counter is incremented in this, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I don't need to reset it or anything. I want the counter to be incremented every time. Okay. Similarly, I am calculating right sum also. So what am I going to do? I am going to pass root ka right this time, right? And now I am going to pass the same uh, x value and the count. So now that I have calculated this left sum and right sum, what am I going to do? I am going to calculate sum using this formula. So what am I going to do? I am going to calculate sum like it will be left sum plus right sum. So basically, sum of the left subtree plus sum of the right subtree plus whatever value was there in this node. So root ka data. So this is the sum that I have. Now, if our sum becomes equal to the x value that was given to us in the question, we increment the counter and we return the sum. Okay, to understand once more, what we have done is we have become smart and we are using the same recursive function to do two jobs. One job is to increment the counter if we are finding a sum, but we realize that to in order to find the sum, we need the sum of the left subtree and we need the sum of the right subtree. Anyway, we are going to do that when we are going to call the helper function, right? For the left part, for the right part, because we are going to find for that subtree, subtree ka subtree, subtree ka subtree like that, right? So now what I am going to do is I am going to uh, add an integer return value. To understand once more, what we are doing is we are smartly doing two jobs from the same recursive function. See, we anyway need to calculate the sum again and again to check that okay that the sum is equal to x or not. So instead of having another function calculating the sum. What we are doing is we are returning this integer value. We are returning the sum that we have calculated, and we are reusing it. So this function has now two uh, jobs to do. It is calculating the sum and it is incrementing the counter, but it is also returning the sum to be used by the bigger problem. See, for this, I have already calculated the sum for all the subtrees. So now I can just return those sum and I can reuse them, right? So that's what I am doing over here. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually draw the recursive tree, draw the recursive stack, and understand that okay. What values are we passing every time? How is the counter being incremented? If you are still having doubts, I highly, highly recommend you that try writing this in some IDE and try debugging it. Then you will understand. Okay, where all are we incrementing the counter? What was the root value? Then you will be able to understand that. Okay, what is happening? Now let's try to understand our edge cases. Where are we going to stop? Have we uh, have we handled all the cases or not? In trees questions, one thing that we always have to check is that this root value should never be null because otherwise, if we do this root ka data, we'll obviously have crash segmentation fault. So for that, first time when I call the function, I have checked that okay, n value is at least one. So the first time I call the helper function, I know that okay, root value will be there; it will not be equal to null. Now the next time when I am calling the left sum right sum value, what I am going to do is I am going to put a check over here that if root ka left exists. Only then call this. Similarly, if root ka right exists, only then call this. 
otherwise what would have happened if i would not have put this text is then it would have called this function and inside this this root value is null right if it if i hadn't put this text and if root ka left was null then i pass null over here now when i do null ka data it, i lead to segmentation fault so to avoid this we have to add these texts now let me know in the comments whether you thought of this or not whether you were able to find that bug in my code or not that is why i am adding these things later the return value also i added later the integer value for you to understand that okay why am i returning the value because i need to reuse the sum otherwise how will i have the sum of the left subtree right subtree similarly if you don't do this root ka left if you don't add this check what will happen is you try doing this you try combining and see that okay what error are you getting okay so now what am i going to do i am going to call this function and see whether our code works or not initially we need a counter value that we are going to return so i am returning it as zero then i am calling the helper function i am passing the root value the x value and the counter value okay and i am returning counter from here and now let's see compilation happened let's try submitting and see this what but this is not where we are ending the video because i want you to consider all the cases now see suppose i had not passed this counter value by reference what would have happened let's see i am trying to compile see the first test case itself is failing uh, the output is zero why because we are never incrementing it when we are passing by value and we call this function what happens is there is a copy of this counter value that is uh, being generated and whatever change we are making is to the copy value we are not making any changes to the original value and that is why we need to pass it by reference and that is why we need to have a variable over here because that is the variable that we are going to make changes to i can't just pass this zero see if i just pass this zero obviously we have not made changes to the counter value right because we did not even pass the variable so right so we have to pass the counter value see it gave me compilation error only because i am expecting a variable over there so these are the small things that you should notice similarly uh, similarly let's see what would have happened if i removed this check so now if i compile and see see i relate to segmentation fault why because i tried uh, getting the data value for a null value so you know uh, to understand these edge cases properly try making mistakes and try seeing that okay what is happening and that is why practicing is so important for these questions because you will make mistakes and then you will understand that okay what was the problem that i was facing so i hope the video helped you tomorrow we will do a very interesting question not a trees question but it will be very interesting for sure so i hope you will show up tomorrow see you